Who am I kidding? Hello, it's me, Ghost Critic. Thank you for joining me again in this small series looking at the very first issues of this new Sandman universe. And yes, I know this is a little bit late. Issue two has already come out and you'll no doubt be listening to me talk about that on Monday. But we had a new number one from the kind of offshoots of this four-tiered Sandman universe. And basically we're in this all together because this is a brand new book with a kind of brand new pocket of the Sandman universe, brand new characters. So you don't need really any full reading of the Sandman universe. You can take this as kind of like a brand new start. Um, written by Nola Hopkinson and uh, art by Dominique Stanton. This is an unusual pocket universe for um, uh, the Sandman universe because it's starting to deal with kind of like voodoo and Haitian magic and we get reintroduced and uh, delivered more information about the characters that we got from that little primer one-shot, the Sandman universe. If you want to know more about the characters, then hop back um, about three or four weeks ago where I um, reviewed that uh, and gave you all the kind of information about the characters uh, within this book. So yes, we get re introduced to Azuli, uh, Maggie and Latoya, the lesbian lovers, um, the the kids, uh, Lumi and Habib, Habibi, sorry, and uh, a new kind of character called Shekpana, who is kind of linked to Azuli, uh, he's her nephew. And then we have Uncle Monday back again, this kind of alligator king um, that kind of roams the world. Um, it, it's interesting because if I'd have had this on time, I would have probably said this in uh, my review of Duke Joint because there are some similarities here already. Um, in the idea that we have this kind of goddess who appears to be quite benevolent um, and addresses her believers uh, and helps them fulfil their wishes, their dreams. Their dreams. Um, so there are some similarities there. There seems to be a whole interest lately in the world of voodoo uh, and the magic that um, goes around that. Um, but with the House of Whispers, this is done obviously on a more regal, uh, grander, royal uh, scale. Before we get into the actual story, it's interesting to me that this Obviously the title is called The House of Whispers uh, and that gives us a connection to the other houses that already exist within the Sandman universe. So we have Cain and Abel's House of Mystery uh, and House of Secrets. And while I kind of understand that, yes, we've had a lot of history about those um, houses, but they their names kind of indicate what they're about. Uh, the House of Secrets, it holds lots of secrets that, you know, um, Abel isn't meant to tell anyone, but him being the blundering fool he is, often lets out those secrets. Then you have Cain and his House of Mystery. Yes, he knows about the mysteries of the world uh, and I guess the answers to them. But what are the whispers? And I don't really think this is addressed here um, as yet. So it, it's an interesting concept already that we have um, an extra house and by the end of this issue, um, they kind of all, <laughs> they all come together. Uh, we'll get to that. Um, so the concept of a house of whispers, what are these whispers? Are they rumors um, that are partially true? Is there some truths behind them? Um, are they uh, just a, a kind of fiction, a kind of almost malevolent idea to kind of put that whisper of doubt in someone's mind to make them do, you know, bad or wrong things or make the, 
the wrong path, take down the wrong path, wrong decisions, all that stuff that you kind of associate with whispers, but really not particularly addressed here yet, but we're only at issue one. Um, it kind of all kicks off with Uncle Monday uh, coming to the House of Whispers, which is actually this kind of huge kind of boat barge type thing um, that, that I guess is set in a kind of otherworldly existence um, and the, the celebration is obviously uh, kind of open to, to all believers, um, all walks of life um, and everyone's having a grand old time and obviously uh, our Azuli, our goddess, is taking centre stage um, as as she should. She is the goddess. These are all her, her followers, her believers. And uh, through the through this kind of celebration, you understand that this is kind of a meeting place for people who are dreaming of her to enter this otherworldly um, plane and ask her for um, wishes for things good to happen to them because they have faithfully devoted their lives to her and she will accept and provide. So we get this idea that she she predominantly is a, uh, a benevolent character, a caring, a giving um, person, um, but I am sure there are some perhaps darker elements to her that um, Kind of a touched on in this very first issue. Now it wouldn't be a Sandman book without a bit of magic in the air and obviously we have uh, this idea of these visions, these portents that she, she witnesses through this kind of magical mirror and these uh, characters that are kind of uh, I guess a medium for her to um, receive these kind of messages of what may or may not happen um, but it's weird that kind of mixed in this because uh, alongside all these celebrations that are going on we uh, see Maggie, Latoya and the kids kind of just having a kind of uh, well they're babysitting for the kids basically and um, they're playing games and they do a game of Chinese whispers uh, and through this, it's kind of it's, it's kind of got this almost sciency tech side to it as well, um, because we're dealing with characters who live in the modern day. So the kids have got phones, they're texting. You've got the TV on the background, which big plays a big part. It, it's almost used as like a gateway for one of our new characters. Um, so, so it's interesting that we have that kind of dichotomy of like magic and the kind of sciency tech side, which normally don't really mix. They are kind of separate and opposing forces. But as we kind of see um, the use of the technology, the TV um, it is mixed with um, the magic of this new character, Shakpana, to kind of break through to the other side. Um, and, and yes, we have, uh, it, I've got to say this, this was a little bit confusing about what was going on, what the idea was behind this. And it, it kind of, I mean, I don't want everything obviously thrown at me, all the answers straight away, uh, but it kind of, the, the elements of the story that we're going through just seem to be leading up to what we kind of guessed was going to happen and the culmination of this issue where the House of Whispers is dragged through this kind of rift uh, between the dreaming and the um, whatever plane that her uh, kind of boat resides on, pulling them into the dreaming and landing them stranded within it. Um, I don't, I'm not quite, obviously I'm going to be picking this up, I want to know more, I'm intrigued, um, but the rules, because this is a new book, because this is a new character set, the rules of this particular universe um, 
kind of have yet to be revealed. Um, and I kind of, I'm trying not to remember what I've already read in issue two, but it, it kind of feels like this House of Whispers um, and Azuli, who is a goddess, but I guess she's not like an immortal, like dream and death. Uh, and um, despair and all, all those um, that there's a kind of differential from them because uh, Azuli cannot freely go between these two planes and for to have been dragged into this rift um, is a, a shocking thing for her. Um, and again, it's kind of like, it, it's interesting that the House of Mystery and the House of Whispers um, are quite you know, set in the dreaming, they are part of it, so why shouldn't the House of Whispers be two? Or is this more of a house that has been created by the voodoo priestess, the goddess Azuli, rather than, um, uh, I guess, a creation of dream to reside within the dreaming? So there's all these interesting questions getting uh, poked at uh, and prodded and uh, piquing my interest, uh, so I'm liking that. Um, there's clearly a lot more to be explained, but I'm liking the development of these characters. Uncle Monday, this kind of alligator king character, um, it's difficult to get a grasp on, on kind of what his actual motives are, what his kind of deal is because uh, at one point he's very gracious um, and he is uh, kind of bowing down. He, he sees Azuli as his, I guess, a superior uh, as he, he comes in quite cordially. But aside from that, um, we see him as, as uh, not creepy but a very dangerous and scary guy uh, just the scene with him talking about you know something quite simple as as eating prawns uh, uh these these big shelled fish um it, it it feels quite murderous and it feels like that character could turn at at any second so i'm gonna i'm gonna be in it's gonna be interesting to kind of um unwrap the layers so to speak of these characters and find out what the kind of true agendas are as we as we move on through the book. Um, I'm excited for this. I, I'm looking forward to extra issues. The artwork by um, by Stanton, um, it's very nice in here in this issue. Um, I, I, I don't know how to explain it but it feels typically vertigo. Um, I'm not quite sure how to explain that, but having read a great deal of vertigo books, this has the feel, the atmosphere, the look of a vertigo book. And, it, and I don't think it could reside anywhere else, not even like an image which has such diverse and um, kind of genres uh, and styles, both in storytelling and art. I, I can't imagine this anywhere else but vertigo. So I'd love to know your thoughts about this. If you pick this up, are you enjoying this as an extra addition to the Sandman universe? Do you think it fits in um, to the whole mythos of Dream uh, and Neil Gaiman's um, initial vision of his huge saga? Um, I enjoyed it. I'll, I'll give you that. So until next time, and we'll have hopefully a new number one of this quartet of titles that are coming out of the Sandman Universe. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye.